Hi guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to integrate your React Native application with authentication. So basically, what is authentication? So to put it simply, if you want to use your application and if you want to allow users to log into your application using services other than your default login service, then you can use authentication. So for example, Gmail, Facebook and other services which allow users to log in and these are used for authentication so first things first so for the sake of this tutorial I'm going to be using a simple react native application so nothing big so I've gone ahead and I've just created a simple application so it doesn't matter even if you're using your own application or you're, you're starting from scratch uh, then the process is actually the same so what I've gone and done is um, I've actually initialized a sample React Native application. So I've installed the React Native CLI using npm install CLI. And then I've created or initialized the React Native application by running React Native init. So my folder name is auth. So just go ahead and get your React Native application ready. And once you have got your React Native application ready, the first thing you need to do is create in you create your um, your backend or create your uh, open ID system so you can use Gmail or you can use Facebook for this tutorial I've used Okta because it's flexible and it's actually a uh, open ID authentication system it works just like a Gmail and Facebook and you have to uh, make an account and uh, use that uh, use the open ID login and uh, the IDs to integrate it into your system so first things first so go ahead and go to Okta and um, once you go to Okta you're gonna have to create an account so I've already created an account so if you haven't done so just create an account and once you've created an account now as we're using a react native application in this case the first thing you're gonna want to do is after you've created your account and you verified it go ahead and click on applications so this is the main screen click on applications so you're gonna have to configure your own app application so after you've done that just add an application give it some time and our application is a native application so click native and click next and give the application a name so in my case it's going to be Re react native react native simple as and you're gonna to have to go ahead and just uh, copy this and keep it somewhere safe because you're gonna be needing it so just copy this and I'm gonna just put it inside a text document so this is the first thing you need so just copy this and keep it and right so group assignments yeah everyone and grant type allowed so in this case we're gonna give it as a refresh token so other than authorization code you're gonna need a refresh token and we've we've copied our login redirect URL so once you've done that you're gonna to have to save it you've uh, you've saved it on your text document because you're gonna be uh, needing this later on so once you've done this just go ahead and click done and once you click done you should see a client ID on your other screen so go ahead and check what that is so this is your client ID so again you're gonna need this as well so copy this and save it along with the login redirect URL so you're gonna be needing both of these later on right so the next process is simple go ahead and go into your react native application or any application that you have and the, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to want to install react native app auth which is actually a library so go ahead and npm install react native app auth version 3.1.0 for this tutorial I'm using version 3.1.0 but just go ahead and install it and give it some time great now that we've installed it the next thing we're going to want to do is link it so simple as react native link to link the libraries in the system 
React Native link. Right. So now that we've linked it, the next thing you're going to want to do is now for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to keep everything as simple as possible. So when I initially initialize my React Native application by using React Native init, this is the template that came with it. So again, it's a simple thing. So we're going to have to change all this. So I'm going to go ahead and change it accordingly. And once I change it, I'm going to show you so you can modify your application uh, similarly. So now that we've modified the entire app.js. So according to your application, you're going to have to change it accordingly. So in this case, as we're using Okta, you're going to have to create a uh, config. So within the config, you're going to have to define your issuers and your client IDs and your redirect URLs. So as you can see now, this uh, template is from the main Okta domain. It's, it's from the main Okta developer site. So if you want to use this boiler template, then just go ahead and search on the Okta website and you will find a boiler template for the React Native application. So, as I've told you, uh, this is actually a simple application. So as you can see, let's just go through it. And what it does is when a user initially authorizes, so it's just gonna show a simple application, and a user will have to authorize it. So when a user authorizes his, uh, his or her application, what it's gonna do is it's gonna check or it's gonna ask the user for it, for his or her login details by using uh, a form and in that form the user will have to input her or his or her details uh, octa details so as we're using octa in this case his uh, the user is gonna have to input the octa details but if we were using gmail or facebook then they'd have to input their gmail or facebook emails uh, or passwords respectively so what it does is it uh, yeah, it checks uh, who the user is and then it uh, checks with the uh, Okta website and it specifies or it re uh, gives back a access token and that is used to verify whether the user is the same person or not. So again this does not use the uh, initial login uh, system of the application. What it does is it uses uh, an external or a third party login system. In this case it's Okta. So the first thing you're going to need to do is, uh, as you can see, you're going to have to input your Okta domain and your Okta scheme. So what this means is that when I told you to copy this, so you're going to be using this. So for each Okta developer account, this is unique. So go ahead and input these two. Now the first one, your Okta scheme. Your Okta scheme would be this. So yeah, just before the callback and copy yours respectively and paste it here. Now for your Okta domain, the Okta domain is actually a bit different and uh, let's just copy the client ID first before going on to that. So go ahead copy your client ID over here. So now that we've copied both the redirect URL and the client ID, we're gonna have to copy the Okta domain. Now the Okta domain is, we haven't actually copied it yet, but uh, if you want to find your Okta domain, then the first thing you're going to need to do is click on API. So click on API and under API click on authorization service and you will find your issuer URL here. So in this case, this is the your Okta domain. So go ahead and copy that and paste it here. Right, so you should be done for now and what this is going to do is it will allow you to authorize your application and refresh your access tokens and then revoke it. So basically this is what authentication is. So in my case I've used or in as you can see in the Okta website they've used uh, style components. So I'm just going to go ahead and install the npm style components. npm install style components. Just give it some time. Once you've set your issuer, your client ID and your redirect URL, you're gonna have to make a few changes inside the Android Studio. So inside your root program. So go ahead and go on to your Android Studio. And inside Android Studio, go inside the Android folder, inside the app folder and inside build Gradle. So under build Gradle, search for your config, default config. And within that, just within that, create a new 
setting called manifest placeholder so manifest oops manifest place holders so manifest placeholders is equal to and within an array you create you set the app auth redirect scheme or app auth redirect scheme and within that you have to set your octa scheme so again what is your octa scheme your octa scheme you're going to find it inside uh, the one we just copied right now so i'm going to go ahead and show you so this is your octa scheme so this is it so go ahead and copy this and paste it here so under your default config you have your manifest placeholders Mm, so the next thing you're going to want to do is basically you've just done all the basics or you've done all the main things so just to show you guys how this works now again you can use this for gmail or facebook um, so just to show you how it works uh, let's just see right so as you can see guys uh, the program is running now it took a while but it's running now so it's just a simple application with the authorize uh, button and once you click on that it should show you an Okta login form and you should be able to log into your application using an external service so again i'm just going to click on this and yeah as you can see it redirects to another browser so from your main application it goes to another browser and welcome to chrome okay this is the first time i'm using chrome on this just gonna click next and sign into Chrome. No thanks. And yeah, as you can see, it redirects to another browser, and it allows you to log in using your Okta username and password, and then it redirects back to your normal application. So again, if you're using Gmail or Facebook or any other external uh, uh, device, Google Plus, etc., you can otherwise use the same process and uh, set your issuer and client ids redirect urls accordingly and uh, you can modify your uh, react native application accordingly but as you can see the main uh, function of this tutorial is to integrate your application using authentication which will allow the user to log in using an external service so once again thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next tutorial